ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome to the second day of our plenary season. And before introducing my speaker, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Nata Anggia, SD Moderator. And our speaker today is Yanuar Dwi Prasetyo, MA Tiso. He is currently a lecturer at Bandarampo University. He was graduated. Uh, he has he had finished his BA in 2008 from State Islamic College, Tulung Agung, East Java. In 2012, he got a scholarship from Indian government, what is called by ICCR, Indian Cultural Relationship, in English and Foreign Language University, Hyderabad, India. And in 2013, he also got another scholarship from government, Indonesian government, to the University of Limerick, Ireland. And he is still doing his PhD up to present. And in this nice occasion, Mr. Renoir would like to present his paper entitled is cooperative learning appropriate instructional methodology to support the implementation of curriculum 2013 in Indonesia? Well, Mr. Yanwar, you have 45 minutes for the presentation and including uh, question and assessment. So the time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Before I start my presentation, I would like to express my gratitude for Bandar Lampung University, especially Pak Rektor and the committee of Second ISL 2014, who have given me the chance. This is a very great chance for me, very great opportunity to be here in front of you and share my research interest and also at the end I do hope that I will get a lot of suggestions, advice and feedback for the betterment of my research. Now I'm doing my PhD and I would like to talk about a little bit my research in PhD. First I would like to today I would like to present my research paper is cooperative learning appropriate instructional methodology to support the implementation of curriculum 2013 in Indonesia? Theoretical and cultural analysis. Let me stand up. So, before I continue to explain my research, I would like to let you know that this research is a part of larger research part of Structured PhD in Tesol University of Limerick. So this research basically comes out of my literature review on cooperative learning. And my PhD research focuses on the uses of cooperative learning on co the communicative components, inter-ethnic interaction and motivation of university students in Indonesia. So, in preparing my dissertation, I read some theories about cooperative learning and this paper is one of the results of my literature review. I would like to remind you that this paper is not aimed to evaluate, is not aimed in at evaluating the implementation of curriculum 2013, but is aimed to explore the appropriacy of cooperative learning to support the implementation of curriculum. So I will not, in my paper, discuss, evaluate the implementation of curriculum 2013, but to explore if cooperative learning is an appropriate instructional methodology to support the implementation of curriculum 2013. In this presentation, I would like to divide my paper into three parts. First, introduction, the background of the study. Second, if I want to explore if cooperative learning is appropriate instructional methodology, I need to discuss a little bit about the curriculum and then the cultural values in Indonesia where curriculum 2013 is going to be implemented. And the last, 
this theory about cooperative learning. At the end, I would like to give you some conclusions and further recommendation for the research. Udo Sen, 2014, states that education is a function of curriculum and its delivery modes, which can only be as good as each teacher. Talking about curriculum is very interesting for me, my personal interest, and talking about curriculum and education quality, we have to talk about the teacher's quality. Because if you want to improve the education quality, the government, the teacher, need to prepare a good curriculum. And good curriculum will not be successful if the teacher's quality is not good enough. So, if we, we talk about education, one part of education quality is a good curriculum. And the core of education is the teacher, because the teacher is the main actor in education. So, as what I said, the curriculum is depending on the implementation of theorized curriculum into actual curriculum. However, a good curriculum is if the teacher doesn't understand the curriculum and can't implement the curriculum in their classroom. However, a good curriculum will not be successful because the success of curriculum is depend on the quality of its teacher. One of the teacher's quality is they know instructional methodology, various of instructional methodology to be used in appropriacy with their needs of the students, their situations of the classroom, and so on. So, my research focus on the strategies and inst or instructional methodology used by teacher will influence the success of certain curriculum. And my research interest is on cooperative learning. So, I believe that cooperative learning to be an effective instructional methodology to support the implementation of curriculum 2013. You can see, as what I have already said, that education, if you want to improve the quality of education, one side is to prepare a good curriculum. And at the core of curriculum, at the core of education, is a good teacher. So, if you want to improve the education quality, first of all, we need to improve the quality of teacher. Otherwise, nothing can happen without a good teacher. Therefore, I hope that my students here, and I'm very happy to be in front of you all, a good teachers from national and international universities. As what I said, the government of Indonesia in their curriculum document 2012 said that curriculum is indispensable instrument for directing students to be qualified people, educated teacher, and democratic and responsible citizens. These are the objective of curriculum 2013, as I understand. Maybe you have different understanding because I'm not really focusing on the curriculum 2013. To achieve the function of the, and the objective of national education, the government prepared new curriculum, which is called curriculum 2013. This is new curriculum for international speakers that Indonesian government implement in the new academic year of 2013-2014. In my understanding that the difference of current curriculum and previous curriculum is that it focuses on outcomes and provides high degree of flexibility in its content. So it gives teachers more freedom to actually decide what they need to teach to their students in accordance to the level of the students that they have. There are four bases of curriculum improvement. Juridical base, philosophical base, theoretical base, and analytical base. You can read in my paper, I explain a little bit about this for uh, base of curriculum 2013. Curriculum is developed based on the theory of standard based and competent based curriculum. What does it mean by standard based curriculum? Standard based education refers to the education which sets the national standards as the minimum outcomes 
quality for every curriculum. So in our curriculum, we set the standard for national, for national Indonesia. So the standard in Aceh is the same standard in Lampung, the same standard in Papua, and so on. In every country, in every province in Indonesia, we have the same set standard by the government of Indonesia. The minimum of cons quality is that stated in the graduate competence standard atau standard kompetensi lulusan. As I mentioned before, argued that teacher is the main education actor, actor who develops the idea and plan or theory in the curriculum to be a learning process or implementation in the classroom. So, without a good teacher, a good curriculum can't be successful, otherwise it can't be implemented successfully in the classroom. The needs for appropriate instructional methodology. If the success of curriculum is dependent on the implementation of theorized curriculum into actual curriculum, so teachers need to be informed on the availability of various instructional methodology. My, my experience said that hopefully the teachers here do not uh, like the teacher that I experienced. Whatever the curriculum, how many times the curriculum has been changed, the way the teacher teach is the, still remain the same. So, therefore, in the new curriculum, there is a need for training and inform the teacher about the availability of many instructional methodology to support their implementation of the curriculum. That's what I have already explained. Now, culture plays a very important role in adopting a new instructional methodology from abroad, especially from Western. So, Indonesia has pluralistic culture which involves many culture, tribe cultures like Javanese, Lampungese, Bataknese, Kupangese, what else? Many cultures in Indonesia, but they have dominant core value that Indonesian people have. In my paper, I would like to mention two core values in Indonesia, which I'm sure you have already familiar with this core value. First is Gotong Royong. Have you ever heard Gotong Royong? I'm sure that you have ever heard. And the second one is Musyawarah Mufakat, Deliberation and Consensus. When I was a young child, I often invited to do Gotong Royong, come to the mosque and clean the mosque together. But nowadays, I don't know if it still happen in Indonesia. Therefore, I would like to take Gotong Royong and Musyawarah Mufakat as core value that we need to re- what is that? Re-improve. We need to rebuild the culture values of Gotong Royong and Musyawarah Mufakat. Gotong Royong is community-based and supportive ethics system for communal work and responsibility in which the individual has certain moral obligation to a wider society. So in the concept of Gotong Royong, we are not as an individual itself, but we have moral obligation for the wider society, for our society. And mutual assistance help to ensure that community members, members carry comparable lo loads and thereby share the burden of economic and social survival. Gautam Royal, again, is in accordance to the positive interdependence, individual accountability, face-to-face -face promotive interaction principles of cooperative learning, which I will tell you later on in my presentation. Musyawarah Mufakat, created of cooperative spirit that underlies the village sense of community in Indonesia. Again, last few years, in village uh, condition, sometimes, the, my father was invited to come together to discuss an issue and they held Musyawarah Mufakat. They come together, bring together the issues and discuss to find one agreement on the issues. The concept involves the process that developed general agreement and consensus which emerged the unanimous decision or Mufakat. So the decision in Musyawarah should be one and everyone Every party should agree in that decision. 
The value of Mushawara Mufakat can also be seen in accordance to the principle of cooperative learning which involves all students. So in Mushawara, we involve all the parties of the community. In schools, we have to involve all the students in, this, in the class, like low, medium, and high achiever. In my experience with the uh, traditional teaching method, it's only a good student who get attention from the teacher. And the low student achiever, they don't get any attention from the teacher. Now, um, it's my research interest, cooperative learning, is defined as group learning activities organized so that the learning is dependent on the socialist structure exchange of information between learners in groups. So the key words is in groups. In which each learner is held accountable for his or her own learning and is motivated to increase the learning of others. The difference with the traditional group work is that each individual in cooperative learning group, they have individual accountable. So they need to be responsible for their own work and need to contribute to the group. In traditional group work, sometimes we just give the task to the students without actually dividing the workload. And some good students will take care of the group work and others just put their name on the work. So it's different with traditional group work. Research on cooperative learning suggested positive effect on the students' attitude, knowledge, and skills, which are the three main objectives of curriculum 2013. Slavin proposed that there are four theoretical basis for cooperative learning which explain the achievement effect of cooperative learning. Motivational perspective focus on the reward and goal structure under which students operate. Dutch, stated in Wang 2009, it identifies three goal structure, cooperative, competitive, and individual. I don't know what uh, goal structure did you implement in your classroom, but here, Dutch proposed three different goal structure. Cooperative is when one individual goal attainment effort contribute to the success of others. That is cooperative. Competitive, if my goal attainment effort prevent others to get success. In competitive, if one student gets success, it means the chance of other students to get success is less. In individual, Usually it happens for PhD students, I feel that this individual, I don't care about others. The main point, my research is going run well, and I can finish my research. So PhD is a very lonely study. There is in accordance with the spirit of Gautam Rayong. So in motivation, that students are motivated to achieve a group goals is in accordance with the spirit of Gautam Rayong where they work together, share the loads of the work to achieve the same goal. Social question perspective believes that students will help one another learn because they care about one another and want one another, another to success. So the theories behind cooperative learning say that students will help each other because they care with each other and want others to get success as well. Another theory, cognitive development perspective, believes that interactions among students around appropriate tasks will in themselves increase the student's achievement. It is based on the theory of Vygotsky and PIT, Zone of Proximal Development. It says that when students work together, even they don't know, each individual they don't know, when they work together, they come to the conclusion of higher than their own ability. So it is very useful to use a group work. The last theory is cognitive elaboration perspective hold that if information to be retained in memory and related to information already in memory, learner must engage in some sort of cognitive restructuring or elaboration of material. 
I still remember when I was in elementary school, my teacher always asked me to work together after school to study together with another students. There, we can share our understanding about the teachers, about the materials, and then we come to the conclusion which is more higher understanding of the material. But nowadays, I see that students, they don't do group work study, but they take a tutor, private tutor, to teach them. In the sense of social, social ability, nowadays the students they don't have really interpersonal communication skills because they just study with themselves and with the private tutor. In the previous years, we need to cooperate with others, we need to re-explain the material to other students so we can get a better understanding. That's what I have already explained. The principle of cooperative learning, there are five basic principles. Positive interdependence, individual accountability, face-to-face -face promotive interaction, social, interpersonal skills, and group processing. One more uh, supporting idea that support cooperative learning to be appropriate to support the implementation of curriculum 2014 is the availability of Learning techniques available like, ranging from very concrete to prescribed to very conceptual and flexible. So, because cooperative learning has many techniques, the teacher in Indonesia can choose the techniques which is appropriate for them, which is appropriate for their own level of comfortable in using cooperative learning. There are four group uh, cooperative learning group, informal learning, formal learning group, and cooperative based group. Cooperative learning doesn't assume any particular form, syllabus, things, activities from a wide variety of curriculum can be taught via cooperative learning. Some considerations to apply to take cooperative learning in Indonesian context is that the complexity of cooperative learning structures and the second, because cooperative learning involves the students to actively participate in the classroom, it will give additional burden for the teachers to prepare the materials, to actually work hard to involve the students to be actively participate in the classroom. Sometimes, students do not understand and are not able to work cooperatively with others, because nowadays, in the Students are very individualistic and they don't know how to work cooperatively with others. Students may resist changes in the instruction. Like Dr. Harry yesterday said that if the teachers do not talk, means the teachers do not teach. As well, the students, if the teachers do not talk, they think that the teachers doesn't work. So, the students may resist the changes. They come to the classroom, need to be taught by the teacher, not by the, their peers, not by other students. There is a resistance to use cooperative learning. The competitive approach is still in national examination because now in Indonesia we still have national examination. It means that the teacher need to teach students the material to be evaluated in national examination. So the teachers will not put them in the danger to use cooperative learning because they need to teach some materials which will be evaluated in the national examination. The potential drawbacks for the application of cooperative learning in Indonesian context. I wrote another paper that I will be presented in international language conference in Malaysia with my supervisor and I evaluate the cooperative learning in Indonesian context from uh, potential benefits and drawbacks for application. Conclusions, the writer believe that cooperative learning will be an effective instructional methodology to achieve three main objectives of curriculum 2013. The further research, empirical research on the effectiveness of cooperative learning in supporting curriculum 2013 needs to be conducted. So there is need for empirical research to evaluate if cooperative learning is appropriate to support curriculum 2013. Studies on the teacher's perception 
to these and their actual classroom application of cooperative learning are also needed. So we need to ask the teacher if they know cooperative learning, if they are comfortable to use cooperative learning. Empirical study on the appropriation of cooperative learning in Indonesian cultures, cultural values are also needed. Thank you very much. That's all my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yanuar, for a very smooth and nice presentation. Now we have, we still have got some time for discussion, so we will open question. Okay. Bastian Cross. Okay, my, my name is Bastian. I want to ask Mr. Yan Marbi Prastio. Uh, could you please show us the slide before the question and answer? Uh, I see that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I see the word. Uh, there is uh, the word drawback. What do you mean, what? Uh, drawback that I know uh, before it is a uh, was back or, or back was that's the question thank you in my paper I discussed the potential benefits and drawbacks it's mean that cooperative learning has the potential benefits to be implemented in Indonesian culture but it has also disadvantages that may be contracted between the cooperative learning theories and Indonesian culture. So what I mean by drawbacks is the disadvantages of uh, implementing or adopting cooperative learning, which is developed and originally implemented in Western culture to be implemented in Indonesian or uh, Eastern culture. So there will be some benefits because I understand that in Indonesia, the concept of cooperative learning is not something new. We have uh, Gautam Royong, we have the concept of Musyawara Mufakat, which is one of the core of cooperative learning. So, cooperative learning has potential benefits to be implemented in Indonesian culture. It has also some uh, potential contradiction with Indonesian culture. I can give you one example that in cooperative learning, we have the principle of face-to-face -face promotive interaction where the students need to challenge each other opinion, need to debate with others to come to the conclusion. But in Indonesia, we have also face-saving concept or we don't want to make other people sigh in front of the group discussion. So, in applying cooperative learning in Indonesian context, we cannot hope, we cannot expect a debate between the students in the classroom because they need to, they tend to go around the bus to come to the conclusion. They don't want to directly contract it with other students. Otherwise, the students who contract it with other students will not be friends anymore. Kita pisah temannya. There is the drawbacks of cooperative learning. Thank you. Okay, the second question to yeah, that is Mr. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Bambang Irfani from Radenita Lampung State Institute for Islamic Studies. Uh, Mr. Januar, this is a very interesting topic to talk about and this is always, uh, what is it, uh, always shared by us in LPTK by uh, Dr. Harry and we also in IN share to our teachers in especially by LBG that we emphasize our teachers to apply what we call, it was PAKUM and now <coughs> it is called PAIKUM before it's also called Python Gumbrot or whatever. Yeah, one thing for sure, we try to uh, enhance our teachers with the uh, interesting teaching strategies, 
how to involve students. So it, the teachers, the teacher center should be changed into the uh, student center teaching learning process. And I would like to suggest one thing that talking about the 2013 curriculum, there are four basic changes compared to the previous one. They are uh, standard Mulusan or graduate standard, and then standard EC, content standard, and then process standard, standard process, and the last one is evaluation standard. So these four standards are changed. Then it is urgent for us to know, yeah. Uh, and I think you have to, in, to include in your paper. Then it's also mentioned in your presentation before the three the three domains of education. This is there is also a change. Previously, cognitive domain cognitive domain is the the emphasis of the previous curriculum, but now it has been changed into uh, affective. There, as we know, there are three domains in education: cognitive, affective, and psychomotoric domains. And now, the, with the implementation of 2013 curriculum, that the emphasis has been changed into attitude. And now, would, would you please elaborate how the implementation of cooperative learning? may trigger or may boost the student's achievement in attitude. It's very urgent because we, we cannot just rely on our students to achieve the cognitive domain only as before and we can see the very bad impacts to Indonesia because we adore cognitive domains too much then we neglect other domains. I think that's my question. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Pak uh, There are two things that I wrote here. The first is the comment, the suggestion that co uh, curriculum has been changed. Now the focus, the, the changes are on the graduate standard, um, content standard, process and evaluation standard. Thank you very much for the suggestion. And the second, the question is how can we use cooperative learning to achieve the affective domain in the curriculum 2013? In cooperative learning, we have five basic principles that need to be involved in the teaching and learning process. And one of the basic principles in cooperative learning is social and interpersonal skills. The cooperative learning is different with another group learning, uh, group work learning that in cooperative learning, social and interpersonal skills are taught like the content of the material. So in cooperative learning, we need to teach the students how to express their idea in group work, how to actually work together with other students. So by teaching them how to work together, how to express their idea, how to actually contribute to the group work, it teach them uh, leadership skills and then communication skills. So I think by using cooperative learning, this is very appropriate for the students to improve their affective uh, domain of uh, three domains in education. Thank you, Bob. I think maybe that answered your question. Okay, thank you, Wayne. Well, we still open some more question for the audience. Okay. Okay, good morning, sir. My name is Purwanto. I'm the sixth semester of uh, students in Bangalore University. I got some points of your presentation today. The first is teacher is the main actor. Second is cooperative learning is group learning activity. And then the third is students do not understand. Um, students don't understand and are not able to work cooperatively with others. And my question is, I do not believe that in the class. Uh, 
there are passive and active students. So my question is how the teacher can influence, how can the teacher influence the passive students in order to achieve um, the student achievement in the class, in or, and in, in order the passive students become active. Thank you. Thank you. A very good question. <clears throat> in cooperative learning, it's different with uh, traditional group work. In traditional group work, the teacher just give the task and let the students to decide how to work on the task. But in cooperative learning, teachers influence the shared work of the students. So basically, each students have their own individual work part. So for example, if you want to build a house in a group work of cooperative learning, each students are responsible to build each part of the house. So by defining the work of the group task and by emphasizing the cooperation among the students, it is hoped that the active students can help, can support the passive students to achieve their target. So in this cooperative learning group, there is a positive interdependence principle where students cannot achieve their target unless other students achieve their target. So it is an obligatory for the active students to help and support the passive students to achieve their goals. So in cooperative learning, teachers do not let the students to work by themselves, but teachers actually monitor and support the cooperative work of the students. So there will be no child left behind. No child left behind. Even if it is lower achiever students, they, they have a unique uh, contributions for the group work. So uh, hopefully I answered your question that in cooperative learning, teachers really uh, influence the, each individual to achieve their own uh, target. And each individual will support each other. So uh, passive or active students will be encouraged to actively involve in the classroom process. Thank you. We will open one last question from the audience. Yes, Ms. Ampor. Okay, I just want to share to, to support Yanur uh, uh, because I, I like cooperative learning. I, I like this way myself. I usually use this approach in my classroom in Thailand. And I don't think Thai students are different from Indonesian students. We, we share many similarities. So I think my experience can, can change like some, some change like to you, for example. Um, a teacher is just like a facilitator, not a teacher in, in traditional terms as we are. Okay, a teacher, you are my student. No, we are partners. The teacher just um, someone who arranged the task to help the student to improve themselves in their own ways. So different students have different tasks, but the tasks from different students will get together to form the whole picture. So the picture, the whole picture will not be complete or beautiful without a complete individual task from students. So. All students, whether they are smart or poor, whatever poor, they are responsible for themselves. They see their concrete tasks. They are confident. They are proud of themselves. These are comprehensive learning. So, the the roles of the teacher in 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 co cooperative learning approach is just like a facilitator who arrange the student who promote the student to leash their full extent of learning. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Alphorn. Okay, thank you. So, due to the time limitation, I think we should end up the discussion. And for Mr. Yanwar, thank you for a very enlightening presentation. 
finally, good morning. Please be seated. Thank you for the souvenir. 